Welcome to Train Signal. I'm Ross Bagertis, and in this video, we're going to take a look at how to enable Secure Shell, SSH, and also learn some tips and tricks that we can use on the command line interface of a Cisco router. So remember, Secure Shell, or SSH as we normally call it, is the encrypted counterpart to Telnet. So it's an encrypted session to transfer traffic, just in the same way that Telnet works. So what I have set up here is I have a PC connected to my router. My PC's IP address is 10.0.0.10, and my router's IP address is 10.0.0.1, both on the same network, so we can communicate with each other. I also have a rollover cable run from my PC over to the router so that I can configure the device when I'm not connected to it over the network. So now that you know what the drawing looks like, let's dive right into the demo. So I'm going to once again use PuTTY. I actually want to connect through the console port of the router to configure this. Because if I Telnet into the router, one of the things I have to do when I'm enabling SSH is I actually have to disable Telnet. And we don't want to run the risk of disabling Telnet while we're enabling SSH and then not have a mechanism to get into the router to finish our configuration. So in order to fix that, I'm going to use serial communication here to connect to the router over that console port connected to the RS-232 port or serial port on my PC. So let's open that up and I'll press enter. Now I've already pre-configured this and if you want to watch me configure this, watch the router configuration video and I go through step by step exactly how to enable this particular configuration. I highly recommend practicing that configuration as much as you possibly can. So my password here is Cisco. I'll type that in. We need to get to privileged mode. I type enable and Cisco and it brings me to my router prompt. Now before we get into turning SSH on, let's look at a couple of hints and tricks and tips that we can use while we're in this command line interface. So the first one that's ridiculously valuable is the question mark command. And the way the question mark command works is you just press the question mark. Notice I said just press the question mark. I did not say press the question mark and then press enter. I said press the question mark. So if I hit the question mark key, it comes up with a list of all of the commands available at that particular prompt. Now I realize I scrolled through there relatively quickly but the, because there's a lot of commands that do a lot of different things. But the nice part about this is, is that if you know that your command starts with, let's say, the letter C, we can press the letter C and then press the question mark again. Now remember, I'm just pressing the question mark. I am not pressing question mark enter. Just the question mark is all I'm pressing. If we press question mark enter, it's going to come and say, I, it's an ambiguous command. It'll give us the help, but it won't give us what we need. So C question mark tells us what commands begin with the letter C. Excellent. So if I want to configure my router then, I know that one of these commands will work. It does happen to be the configure command. Let's see if I can narrow this down so that I only have the configure command listed here when I hit question mark. So to do that, I can hit two letters, CO, question mark. Now it reduces it to just the commands that start with CO. If I do CON, it's going to reduce it down to two commands. And then CONF, it reduces it down to one command. So now there's only one command on the Cisco router that starts with CONF at the privilege mode prompt, at this pound sign prompt here. CONF is the beginning of the configure command, and that's all we need to type in, actually, to make the command work. So, CONF is enough to get the command to work. I have an alternative, though. I can actually press the tab key, and the tab key will automatically complete the rest of the command for me, so I don't have to type. In the router configuration video, you probably watched me struggle a little bit typing the commands in, because on a day-to-day -day basis, after 15 years of configuring routers, you start to get very smooth and slick with your config. Typing in the entire command takes a lot of extra work, plus you have to know how to do this thing called spelling in English, which 
it has no rules at all. It's like the opposite of the router config, which is only rule-based. It only does what you tell it. Spelling, at least in my mind, is somewhat ruleless and crazy. So, at any rate, my whole point to that is we don't have to be good spellers. We don't have to be good typists. We have to be smart, efficient engineer nerds in order to figure out how to make best use of this command line interface. So, question mark key, tab key we can use. Now, we always want to do config T here, and I can press T and then press the tab key, and it fills in terminal for me. If I press enter then, that brings me to the config mode. At config mode, I can once again press the question mark, and it brings me a whole different list of commands available at this prompt. All right, so the, the second piece we can do here, and there are a lot more config commands if you can notice. Lots more config commands. Okay, let's go back a command again here, and let's go back to configure. So I'll do conf, confi, same thing. What I can do now is after I have the command configure in with a space after it, I can press the question mark again. And what will happen there is it will tell me all of the commands now available after I type the word configure. It's going to tell me all of the things that I can type after the word configure. So I can type confirm, memory, network, overwrite, network, replace, terminal. Right? So here I'm going to configure terminal to get into config T. So there we have tab completion and question mark command. Now I don't always have to type the entire command in. So if I want to go in and configure an interface, I don't have to type out the word interface like this. What I can do is I can just type INT and then a space. I don't even have to put the tab in there. I can if I want, and it'll automatically complete that command, but it's not necessary. So if I hit INT space and then question mark, it's going to tell me all of the interface types I can configure on this particular device. Now there are more interface types on this device than I have ever configured in my career as a network analyst, but the point here is that we can see the interfaces available. The big ones that we're going to be configuring are the fast ethernet interface, the serial interface, and later on we'll configure some loopback interfaces. The rest of these interface types inside of the router are designed for other applications that are, in some cases, well outside of the scope of the CCNA curriculum. At any rate, if I type INT space question mark, it tells me the interfaces I can configure. Now what I can do is I can just type the first letter of the interface I want to configure. Let's say I want to put an IP address on fast ethernet 0 slash 1. So instead of here typing out fast ethernet and making mistakes, oh my goodness, E-T-H-E-R-N-E-T. -E -E so instead of typing that all out, I can actually just leave the F there and say F0 slash 1. Oops. And that will actually allow me to configure now fast ethernet 0 slash 1. So when we speak about interfaces on the router, oftentimes we just use this shorthand and say interface F01 or S for serial 01, or whatever that interface name is. Now let me show you one other thing here with the question mark. So we have interface fast ethernet. Now I just hit the tab key here to auto-complete that. If I press the question mark now, what it's going to say is, okay, which fast ethernet interface number are you talking about? And in the brackets here, it tells me I can either choose from 0 or 0. So it's giving me only one option. So we put zero there and then hit question mark. And then it comes back and it, this looks a little odd, but it's saying the only thing I can type there is a slash key. So I press the slash key. And then I hit question mark. Now it's saying which fast ethernet interface number do you want? Zero or one? And now I can type in zero or one to configure the appropriate interface. Why is it labeled like this? Well, on this particular router, we only have two fast Ethernet ports and two serial ports. That's a very small router, and what we could do is most likely just label our interfaces fast Ethernet 1, 2, serial 1, serial 2. But in the bigger scheme of things, when you look at routers in general, 
we have to label our interfaces in this way of 0 slash 1 because when we get into larger devices we can actually have hundreds and hundreds of interfaces on the device and the way that we label the interface is typically a module number identifier and then the interface identifier and for each interface and interface type it's going to be a little bit different but the idea here is that we set up our interface numbers with this nomenclature of zero slash something or zero slash something slash something three numbers we set up that nomenclature so that we can identify exactly where on the router that physical port is located so that we have now a connection between the physical port on the device and the configuration command to configure that physical port okay okay so a couple other pieces here first of all so often, if you type a command that the router doesn't understand, it's going to automatically try to look that up in DNS. So if I type some gibberish here, it's going to go try to find a DNS server that doesn't exist and resolve GKDKRUD into some IP address, and then it'll attempt to tell that to that IP address. And it's going to do this three times. So as I'm talking about this, you can see how I'm waiting for my command prompt to come back. This is ridiculously irritating. And nine times out of ten, you do not want your router to behave this way. So once it's done here, we can go into the configuration and actually change something so that that doesn't happen. So I'll go into config t, and what I'm going to do is type the command no ip domain dash lookup. And when I type no IP domain lookup, now if I type in that gibberish command, do that again, I'll type in gibberish, this time different gibberish, what it's just going to say is, I don't know what that is and I can't find it. So it comes back to you much faster. So that command there is no IP domain lookup. And that just makes it easier to use the router when you're making an error in typing a command at privilege mode prompt. Does this happen a lot? Oh my gosh, yes. And the number of times that it happens and no IP domain lookup is not turned on, it can be a little challenging, to be honest, to try to do work on here while you're waiting for that device to try to resolve an address that doesn't exist. Okay, so no IP domain lookup is there. The other one we can do is, is help us not have to deal with those log messages that are constantly popping up on our screen and interrupting our typing. So those messages are this here. If I do exit and then I start to type show running configuration, I type show. Then the message came up while I was typing and run is over here. Well, can I issue the command show run? Yeah, it works just fine. You have to get used to that log message interrupting your typing. But if you don't want to have to worry about that and you always want what you're typing to show back up, we can fix that. And if we go into config T, and then we go into the mechanism that we're currently connected to user mode. So I'm right now, I am connected to user mode via the console port of the router. So what I want to do is I want to then enter into line console 0, and then add this config, which is logging synchronous. And what that'll do now... When I exit out of config mode, it always pops up a message saying I've exited out of config mode. So if I exit out of config mode and I start typing show run, you notice now what happens is the message interrupted my typing, but it put the command at a new prompt just as I had typed it before, making it much, much, much easier to see and much, much, much easier to deal with. All right, another piece here. If I'm in the middle of show running config, and I find the information I'm looking for, and I want to return to a prompt without going through the entire config. Like I said, this router only has four interfaces on it. Routers that I've used before have 400 interfaces on them. This configuration file can get quite lengthy. So if you're in the middle of it, and you no longer want to look at it, you can press the Control c key, and that will kick you out of the show running config command or other commands that you're working on and bring you back to your prompt. Last trick, and then I'll show you how to implement SSH. If we are in config T, 
we cannot issue any commands that are available at the privileged mode prompt. All right, so if I want to say show run here, it says I can't issue the show run command. I don't know what that is. I cannot issue that command at the config prompt. But oftentimes, as we're working with the config, we want to see what's happening inside of our running configuration file to make sure that we didn't make any errors or to double check what another interface is configured as. So we can do that without having to exit out of config mode, do show run, find the piece of config we're looking for, then do config T again and go back and do the configuration. What we can do at any point in config mode, whether it be in global config mode or sub-configuration mode, where we're configuring the lines or the interfaces or other systems inside the router, we can issue the do command first, and that will escape us out of configuration mode for one command only, and let us issue a command at the privileged mode prompt. The only thing that's broken here is the question mark. So if I type do show question mark, it doesn't give me any help. So if I type do show run at config mode, because I type that do command, I'm escaping out of config mode, going into privileged mode, issuing the command, and then coming back into config mode. But me as the administrator, my prompt never changes. So I can do show run, I can see my running configuration file, and it returns me back to the configuration prompt.